Hey everybody, Black Ninja 797 here, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can end up making Left 4 Dead 2 fun again if it's being boring right now for you. Because Left 4 Dead 2 is one of my personal favorite games. I know on the channel here that many of you really like this game as well, but at moments it can get boring. So in today's video, I want to show you guys how you can make Left 4 Dead 2 fun again if it is boring for you. Now I just want to mention is that these tips are also not going to be generic. These are going to apply to everybody, including if you are a console or a PC player, because we're not just going to be doing generic gaming tips. We're going to be taking a look at the human psychology aspect of Left 4 Dead. Now wait, 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 I know what you're thinking. I know you might be thinking that this is some sort of weird philosophical video where I'm telling you about how I can change your life like this is some sort of crazy TED talk. I promise you this is not what this video is. That's going to be next week. No, I'm just kidding. But anyways, the idea behind this video is not to change you as a person, but rather look at a reframing of Left 4 Dead because the game and you don't necessarily have to end up changing, but more rather, I want you to end up having a different perspective on what's already been established with both you as a person and the game itself. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, I want to end up addressing something real quickly. There is a chance that rather, instead of you being bored of the game, you might be having another need that might not be being met. I say this is because it might not necessarily be variety that you're looking for with this game, but instead it might be one of your other five human needs. Here's a fun psychology fact for those of you that do not know this. There is six basic human needs that every single person has no matter what. It doesn't matter your age, ethnicity, gender, or anything. Everyone has these needs and these needs must be met. These human needs are going to be certainty, uncertainty, significance, love, growth, and contribution. And even though we're focusing on mostly the second one, which is going to be variety slash uncertainty, there might be a chance that you might be looking for one of your other needs out of the six. Now, don't worry, you don't need to stroke out quite yet, assuming you have a midlife crisis. You can end up figuring out what exactly is the need you're trying to meet, and I can show you on how to do it throughout this video because we're going to be taking a look at all six of the needs because that is going to be something that's critical to figuring out how you can enjoy the game again. So we're going to be taking a look at all six needs, one by one by one by one by one by one, and seeing if whether or not that one of these six needs is not being met, and if so, how do we fix that by doing some simple exercises that will allow the game to be more fun instantaneously. So let's talk about the first need, which is going to end up being certainty. So to describe certainty in a very simple definition, certainty is the feeling of wanting to end up feeling secure you are looking for a method that will allow you to feel that you are in control of something that is at play. So if it's certainty you're looking for, the number one thing that I can recommend to you is that if you want to feel like you're more in control of what's happening in Left 4 Dead, is to play the game on number one, easier difficulty, and to two, play with other people, especially with your friends. Left 4 Dead does not have to be a difficult game. We do not end up needing to make this game uberly competitive and making it an eSport. We just want to end up having fun on the game. This is, after all, a video game where the main objective is to have fun. Now, I do understand that there might be the chance that you might end up only having fun and you enjoy games that are challenging and difficult all the time. But here's the thing is that even the most difficult and try hard of games do require a break every now and again. If you were to play the game on an easier difficulty, you would allow yourself to be able to have time to think. The game, in a sense, would almost feel like it's slowing down and being cut at half the speed or half the pace. If you're used to go, 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 and you slow the game down, you could end up turning off that tunnel vision mindset that you might have in your head and you have to look at everything differently so that way you can end up seeing a path or a almost a strategy that you've never noticed before because you constantly were in a rhythm. If you have momentum, you can get stuck in these patterns and to break a pattern is very difficult to do when you're in the pattern itself. You almost have to step away from it and look at it from a fresh perspective. This is why I also encourage you to play with friends or other peoples because if you're playing with everyone, especially if you're communicating with them, they will notice these things that you're not noticing because everyone has different desires and different needs that are not always going to be the same as you even if they are similar and they can end up pointing out stuff to you that you might be getting sucked into that may or may not be helping you. You don't need to have to juggle keeping yourself alive, keeping the bots alive, getting a certain goal, completing the game as fast as you can. The entire idea is that you can end up pawning off some responsibility to some other people so you have minimal things to think about and only are instead thinking about the things you truly, truly want, not the things you think you should be thinking about. 
Now, I do want to acknowledge the possibility that some of you might end up having not really that many friends that play Left 4 Dead, or you have no friends that play Left 4 Dead. So you might be feeling like you're forced to play solo because you don't want to play with randoms that might possibly be toxic. And if that's how you feel, I want to end up reassuring you that I promise you that there is good people out there that still play Left 4 Dead. An example of this is going to end up being something that I want to propose to you as an invitation, which is going to end up being my Discord channel. I have a Discord channel, which is going to be a link down below in this YouTube video's description, and I encourage you to join that channel so you can end up meeting me and all my other subscribers, because all my subscribers and I are more than happy to play Left 4 Dead with you if you need to party up, because we all like to end up hanging out with each other and making friends, and I am more than positive that everyone in the Discord would be more than happy to play with you, regardless if you also play on PC or if you play on Xbox. So please, I encourage you to join the Discord and end up hanging out with all of us because we'd be more than happy to end up playing with you and help you meet one of your possible six human needs. Okay, now we stumble onto the second human need, which is going to end up being uncertainty slash variety. Now this is probably the main reason why you clicked on this video, but I still want to mention the other ones just in case it may not necessarily be this need for you. But if it is, here goes my advice. The number one advice that I want to recommend to you is that if you're looking for variety, is to end up doing pretty much the exact opposite of what I recommended for certainty. Now, I know that this does sound kind of like backwards thinking, but if the uncertainty need is more important to you than the certainty need, you kind of need to do the polar extreme opposites because certainty and uncertainty are kind of a yin to a yang with each other. See, it's funny, God has a strange sense of humor. God not only makes that way we have the need for certainty, but also the extreme polar opposite, which is uncertainty. Now, what is uncertainty in its simplest definition? Uncertainty is the longing for the need to end up trying something new and different. This can end up being met in the form of a challenge, this can be met in the form of just trying simply something you have never done ever before, or taking a look at something you have done before but doing it in a different way or with different people. So how does one beat uncertainty? Well, one of the ways you could end up doing this is by specifically doing a challenge. And I mean a challenge as in doing one with yourself and not necessarily ones that are offered within the game. I have done plenty of challenges in Left 4 Dead. In fact, I have a whole entire series dedicated to it, which you can watch in my YouTube video description via a playlist if you like. But I have done so many different challenges over the years, including, but are not limited to, the Blindfold Challenge, the Upside Down Challenge, the No Hearing Challenge. These are all challenges that are something that I can do on my own as a person that doesn't require an external game mode or a mod or anything, and allows me to be able to take a look at the game from a new perspective, making it more fun different and almost feel like a different game at times. Now if you don't want to necessarily end up breaking your neck or going blind or going deaf because of the fact that you want to do a challenge, I can also propose some easier options that would probably be less extreme for you but still get the job done. The way you can do it within the default game to get your sense of variety is going to end up being playing game modes that you don't normally play. And by that I mean playing game modes you probably don't even like to play. By and large the community can kind of vouch for you on what is exactly a bad game mode in Left 4 Dead or at least the unpopular ones. These are going to usually end up being game modes such as Versus Survival, Scavenge Mode, certain Mutations modes as well. All these game modes, if there's like zero matches that you can find publicly, that's probably most likely going to be a game mode that you could play that not a lot of people have played and mastered before yet. Now some of these game modes might require you to have people in order to play them, hence scavenge mode and mutations mode not even having a public match because just nobody queues for it, but you can end up usually doing a workaround here or there with external mods or just play the game modes that do allow you to play solo, and if you play these modes and you've never played them before or you don't just inherently give them a fair chance, this might allow you to have a sense of variety by feeling like these are a DLC. Now yes, I do understand that if you end up playing these game modes, you might get a little bit frustrated because challenge does end up having opposition and does end up having resistance as well, but if you can get past that little bit of discomfort in the beginning, you will end up feeling like you are becoming a much better player and overall get that spark back again. Now we reach the third need, significance. What is significance in its simplest definition? Significance, in other words, is going to be the longing for the feeling of wanting to be special. Something that would make you feel like you are very unique and you are the only person that has the ability to do said thing. One of the things that I can immediately list that will allow you to feel a sense of significance is going to be achievement grinding. 
Now the funny thing is when it comes to achievements is that they are not something you can physically hold. They are instead all psychological based because an achievement on your Steam profile or on your Xbox account is nothing but digital and all it is is just a little badge that is on your profile saying that you did something. Now it is a little bit easier to end up earning an achievement on Steam than it is to earn it on the Xbox because with Steam you can to a certain degree cheat, especially within Valve games, but if you want to do it legitimately that is your choice and you are more than welcome to also end up doing the cheating method if you were also wanting to do that as well. Luckily for us, Left 4 Dead added in 30 brand new achievements with the last stand update that came out back in 2020. With all the original achievements, plus also the ones that were on The Last Stand if you were playing on the PC version at least of the game, you have tons and tons of achievements to end up earning and also getting. Plus also, if you really want to play Left 4 Dead and earn more achievements, you can also load up Left 4 Dead 1, because even though Left 4 Dead 2 has pretty much everything from Left 4 Dead 1, the one thing that they don't have is the original Left 4 Dead 1 achievements. If you were to have Left 4 Dead 1 and Left 4 Dead 2, and plus also if you're on PC have the last stand achievements, you have tons and tons and tons of achievements that you can earn and also get on your profile so you can show it off to your friends. Another way to feel significant while playing Left 4 Dead Online is to post about it online. If you have a YouTube channel or a Twitch channel or a TikTok or a Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, anything, you can end up showing off your Left 4 Dead moments via these social medias like I do and share your epic moments with the world for everybody to see. There might be somebody out there that thinks that you're the hot shit and thinks that whatever you did in your last Left 4 Dead session is the coolest thing that has ever happened in mankind's history because there always is at least one person that wants to end up having what you have even though it might seem implied or almost easy to you. So in long story short, those are some basic tips on how you can end up achieving significance, but now we move on to the next need, which is need number four, and this is going to end up being love. Now some of you might be thinking yourself being like, how is it that we could be longing for love within a video game? Let me explain because this one may or may not surprise you. Now even though this might sound a little bit dorky at first and we can almost end up being on the side of harsh when I say this, there is truly some people out there that feel a connection to the video game characters that they end up playing with or playing as because they end up reminding them of somebody else in their life that they don't have anymore or want to meet. And in no sense of the word am I judging these people at all, this is completely and utterly acceptable and I can explain their reasoning why in this video. Now when it comes to love, it doesn't necessarily have to go the route of intimacy or almost sexual based content, it can also in its simple definition be on another way related to more rather friendship and overall just connection in general. There might be a chance that most likely the character that somebody is playing as or playing with is a character that reminds them of a friend, a relative, a intimate partner, or even perhaps themselves at times. When it comes to video games, despite how realistic one video game might be, at the end of the day they are a fantasy. We are playing in a set world with a set tone and pace that allows us to be able to have emotions from something that real life just simply can't give us at times. Wanting to end up connecting with a fictional character from a video game is no different than reading about them in a book or watching them in a movie or a TV show. Everyone connects about a character differently and some people just do it through video games. In addition to that, by the way, I wanted to point out one specific thing that only a video game can do compared to a movie or a TV show and a book, and that is you can actually play as the character. It's not like you're following a character in a video game, you are the character, you are them. So the emotions, the feelings, and the vibe overall is amplified because the character and everything that happens to it is also happening to the real life you. It's just that you're doing it through a screen instead of being actually there. So at the end of the day, how do you end up feeling love and connection that you so long for through your video games? The first thing that I would immediately recommend that you do is learn about the game that you were playing itself and get familiarized with the world and the characters within the said world. You can do this by making the characters interact with items and themselves and by triggering their voice lines. You can easily do this on PCs if you end up having a voice wheel, but you can also even trigger this by just interacting with the game normally and just playing it and just listening for the voice lines, maybe even having captions on as well. 
Plus also feel free to explore. You don't necessarily have to be constantly shooting zombies all the time. You can also look around the map and look for Easter eggs, take a look in the environment. You know when you end up sometimes just taking a moment to appreciate life and you're almost kind of having like those high thoughts and you realize that you're breathing? Do that with your game. Take a moment to look up into the skybox and being like, wow, this game looks uberly realistic. That star looks like an actual star. This gun looks actually like a gun. This character looks legitimately realistic and not like a Minecraft character. Next time you play Left 4 Dead, I encourage you, when you load up in the spawn, don't run out of it right away, don't go and grab a gun, just simply walk around the spawn, take a look at the sky, look at all the characters, look at your character, look at the environment that you're in, appreciate the attention to detail and the universe that you're in, appreciate the swamp you're in, the mall you're in, the carnival you're in, and enjoy overall the actual vibe that the place is giving off as if you're taking a trip in real life. It's an adventure and it's something that's meant to be appreciated. You can even have a sense of connection or love for the characters in the universe without even necessarily need to play the game. One of the ways you can do this is by reading the Sacrifice comics, which you can easily just Google search and you can find it and just read it for free. Now we move on to the fifth need. This is going to end up being growth. Now growth and contribution are the two needs that get neglected the most but are the most important in my opinion. So you might be asking yourself, why is growth so important then? What exactly about this out of all the other needs that you have listed, why is this the one that I might be looking for and need to work on the most just to simply enjoy a video game? Growth can sometimes be confused with uncertainty or in this case, even significance because both of those kind of involve like challenging you and making you a better person. But growth is not necessarily about doing a daunting task or doing something new. It's more rather about helping out society and helping you be a better person. Growth is you taking an experience that you have learned in your life and using it to improve other parts of your life in different ways. With growth, you end up paying attention to stuff that really not too many people pay attention to in a game. You might listen to a certain piece of dialogue between characters and might relate it to your real life and use that as advice on how to end up improving your relationships, for example. Or you might play a really blood pumping high adrenaline based mission and you might be thinking to yourself being like wow i would love to end up improving my life and making it more fun and spontaneous and allow myself to end up feeling like i'm truly alive growth in other words is you getting clarity on something you notice something that somebody else does not and you use this as a catalyst to allow you to change something about your life that is actually external from what is really going on it's almost like advice that happens from a game and not a person. So take with that what you will, but I think you know what I mean when I say that growth is kind of like advice, but just not from a person. It's an experience more than anything. Now we finally move on to the last human need. Human need number six, contribution. Like I said, this is not a TED talk, so don't worry, I'm not telling you that you should go donate all your money to the next Jehovah's Witness that you see. I am simply just saying that I encourage you as a person, no matter what your morals are, to end up at least somewhat contributing either your time or your energy to another person or a cause. I'm not saying you should donate money or anything physical, but more rather I'm saying is that you should try to improve other people's lives other than just simply your own. You can end up helping people meet some of their basic human needs and that in turn will also help you meet your human needs. I have a friend that might be struggling in some form of capacity, whether it be trying to feel a sense of significance and grind an achievement, feeling a sense of connection, wanting to play with people, or he might just be bored and just wants to try something new and maybe you could teach him how to end up doing that with these other six human needs that we have learned about throughout this video. We all like to help people and we like to feel like that we are contributing to the world. Whenever something great happens, we want to share that. We want to enlighten others and be like, wow, look at this really cool epic thing I did. I want to share this with the world. I want to show how other people can end up doing this too so that way they can improve their lives. We all secretly want to do this deep down, but sometimes we're afraid. We might be afraid that we might be ridiculed, that people might not care, or might be coming across as almost kind of like impulsive, boring, and weird. But here's the thing is that it'd be a disservice if you didn't end up looking for the right people to help because if you don't end up helping anybody, that person is left to suffer because you were silent and kept that information to yourself. 
You really want to end up having that feeling of knowing that there's somebody out there that could end up having somebody else, specifically you, help them by just simply hearing a relay of a particular piece of information, you could end up giving people the shortcut of a lifetime and help them prevent themselves from having to reinvent the wheel just to figure out something simple. They don't have to go through all the hoops and unnecessary bullcrap, instead just get the direct answer. Instead of giving a man a fish, you are teaching him how to fish. So I encourage you, do not be selfish with the information that you have learned throughout this video. If you know somebody and they are struggling with trying to find out what their human needs are, the ones that are not being met, I am please encourage you to end up helping them. Fulfill your need of contribution and end up helping somebody else out today. Please end up looking around and helping out your friends, maybe randoms that you find online, or maybe even people that are on the internet, such as on Reddit forums, YouTube videos, or maybe even Twitch live streams, and seeing what they need to end up doing to make themselves feel happy. With well, that being said, guys, that is it for all the six human needs, and that's also how, in my opinion, you make Left 4 Dead fun again and not end up having it where it feels like it's being boring. It may not necessarily be the exact type of video that you were expecting, but keep in mind that, like I said, it might not truly be uncertainty or boredom that is bothering you, but more rather, it might be either a combination of all of these or one specific one that is getting confused with the other. So I do encourage you to take a look at all these different needs and trying them by trial and error. And if one does feel right, that's probably most likely what it was. And I do hope that there was a takeaway for you and that this does indeed help. But long story short, guys, I hope you ended up enjoying today's video. And if you did, please consider dropping a like, comment, subscribe, follow, and all that beautiful stuff. Once again, I encourage you, please definitely end up sharing the knowledge that you have found out in this video with other people. So one of the ways you can do this is by sharing this video. If you have a friend that you know, your family plays Left 4 Dead, you can even share this with your local neighborhood hobo that's behind the back of the 7-Eleven. I'm pretty sure they'll all get a kick out of this, but just don't be selfish at the end of the day. In addition to that, guys, you can also check out my Patreon. It's also linked down below in all my YouTube video descriptions. Or you guys could use supporter creator code BLACKNINJA797 in all caps in the Fortnite Epic Games item shops. Because Epic is my very first sponsor, and they are sponsoring today's video. So shout out to Epic Games. But yeah, guys, I hope you end up enjoying seeing another YouTube video from the most unique YouTubers you're ever going to see. Thanks for watching, guys. I love all of you, and peace out. Hey, meme lords. Jesus here. And you better have enjoyed that video there by the eternal god, Daddy Ninja. You should probably subscribe too, or the mighty Moab will come for your balls. If you enjoyed the video, you might like it too. And give me the memes. Flash, bang, boom.